Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I like the, the amen from this side. Uh, l- let me see if this side can do better. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I need not say who did better than who. Um, but as you've been told, my name is Joel. Well, karaoke, I'll set my timer. Yes, thank you. So that uh, I also do not become the preachers who often uh, conclude seven times. So I will know when to start concluding. Um, <clears throat> but today's topic, uh, when I was given the topic, when I was, uh, my friend shared with me about Maranatha. Uh, I think it is one of the topics I have reflected on. And luckily, I was in the, in the season of Asking the Lord, uh, I have been in, a, <clears throat> in what I call a dry season, personally. Um, I have been having my devotions, which sometimes have not been very consistent. I have been having my prayer time, where I have struggled to, to feel the Lord's presence. Um, I have been having down moments. And in all that, I... When I was given this topic, uh, I am grateful, actually, I, because it, it reminded me, it, there's a spark in my heart that was ignited. There's a, there's a thing that now resonates deeply in my heart. It's, it's the continuous remembrance of the hope. And, and then that is what I pray that today, as I share with you, that that same fire that I feel deep down in my heart shall be ignited also in yours. I pray that this hope we call hope as Christians shall be ignited in your hearts. Today I'm also going to do uh, one thing. We are going to to read a very long text. But I pray that you bear with me that we go together uh, from the book of Matthew chapter 24. Uh, and this is what used to happen when the Israelites, they used to have a whole scroll and, 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 and one would read. Uh, but it, it is a tricky balance between, especially now in, the, in our generation. Let me say this. I, I usually say this most of the times. So let me just say it. I was doing a small study uh, about the concentration span of, of people these days. And, and I started my research quite long, and, and I found a few articles. One of them was dated 1992. And in 1992, the research said that the concentration span of the people, for example, like you people here now seated listening to me, that you would listen to me without being distracted. For even a second, you would stay for a maximum of 20 minutes listening to me without being distracted. They did the same survey in 2018, uh, I want to be a preacher and tell you to tell your neighbor, what do you think was the time, the concentration span of people in 2018? In the same, I want you to ask your neighbor, and if you don't have a neighbor, you, it's also nice to ask yourself, uh, I am sorry you don't have a neighbor, but you can reflect. In 2023, last year, they, they did the same test. What are your thoughts? Tell your neighbor again. What? What? How, how many seconds? Just to tell you, in 2018, it was three and a half minutes. Three and a half. Uh, and last year they did, they found it was eight seconds. Yeah. Yes. And 
I want that to be not only funny, but to actually tell you that we are, we are going in a dangerous time. This, this, these devices have been a blessing to us. But at the same time, they have become a snare. They have become the social media accounts that you have. The Instagram you have, for example, whoever takes a bad picture and posts. Unapiga picture karibu tano, unatafta ile mbaya kabisa ndi unapost. No one, does, no one does that. And do you know what this does? It affects, it transcends down to your relationship with your friends. You never talk about the down moments. You never share when you struggle. You only show the good side. And we all think all of us here are good angels. And we struggle. I pray that we will be different. Uh, it, it's hard to say that the first thing is to admit, first of all, you're addicted. You see, many people think, eh, give yourself two days without that social media, you will show you withdrawal symptoms. Simu yako, umuisiki ile, wanasema, tifanya hivi ukeo tau, ukosi simu. I hope it doesn't be a snare. So, turn to the book of Matthew. I hope, that's why I pray that you have this. Uh, but today I forgot mine, I carried the other one, and I found it was the King James Version. Uh, so allow me to, to use my Bible in the phone. But I also want to advise you, please purchase one hard copy. Sour. Miss Sour too. Matthew 24, from verse 1. He says that Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came to him to call his attention to its building. Do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and he said to them, tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the ages? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to, the persecutor, to, to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from their faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase in wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the, in the whole world as, is the testi as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So when you see, so when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the rooftop of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it, it will be in those days for the pregnant women and the nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be a great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. In those days, had not, if those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, 
here is the Christ, and there he is. Do not believe, for false Christs, false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the desert, do not go out. Here he is in the inner room, do not believe it. For as light, uh, as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Whether there is a, a carcass, where there is a carcass, the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the cloud of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to another. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all this have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, my words will never, will never pass away. No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in the Father, nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of, son, of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage up to the day of Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. How it, that is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other one left. Two women will be grinding a meal. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore keep watch because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house knew what time at the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that the servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. My master of that servant will come on that day when he does not ex ex expect him. And at an hour he is not aware he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word that is sharper than any double-edged sword. Your word that transforms. Your word that gives life. Your word that gives hope. Your word that is true. Your word that is eternal. Your word that never fails. Thank you for today even as I share with my brothers and sisters here about your second coming for sure, which is which your coming, I pray, I pray for them. I pray that they will hold on. I pray that they will stand. I pray that Jesus Christ, these ones will be, will be different. They shall live lives to glorify you. I pray that Jesus Christ, you will star in them. You will star in their hearts. And Lord, it shall show in their lives that they shall be marked. These ones shall be different. I pray for them. I pray that you continue nurturing them. I pray that you continue walking with them. I pray that you continue holding their hand when they sleep. I pray that you lift them up. I pray that you will be their guide. You will be their protector. You will continue being their Lord. I thank you because you are able to do exceedingly above all that I ask or imagine. To you, I commit my brothers and sisters, and I pray the Lord Jesus Christ, as we share in your word, give them insight, 
give them understanding. And Lord, even beyond that, what I can say, I thank you and I glorify you in Jesus' name. I do pray and believe. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I will share with us in three ways. The first one is, is the reality of evil. The second one is the reality of his second coming. And the last one I will split it into two, uh, talking about the judgment and also those, the reward of those who persevere. So allow me to start. And as we have read in the text, and I hope you, can, you go back and still read it, Matthew 24. And there are many others, but this one, I, 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 as I was preparing, this one is, is the one that I found to be more, uh, to be much better for today. And, and, and as I was preparing, the reality of the evil in the world, uh, I was looking, the first one he says that these signs, when they come, one of them will be there will be rumors of wars and there will be war. I need not say, uh, right now we know that there are wars. Actually, I did a, a small research. In Africa, we have more than 35 armed conflicts. In Asia, there are more than 21. In Europe, there are more than seven. In Latin America, there are more than six. And the list goes on and on and on and on. We, we know of the famous two, the one that is Ukraine and Russia. We also know Israel and? Eh? Oh, I should not say we all know. <laughs> we might know. Be, where? Oh, there are wars. The, the days are getting darker. And, and, and I can stand here and, and actually tell you that I'm prophesying that they will be darker. If you read the scriptures, you will know it's true. The days are darker and they're getting even darker. There will be distortions of truth. Those who will come and say that I am the Messiah. Some of them will not say they are the Messiahs, but they will be distorting truth. And it's sadly that it has already crept into the church. Oh, people will be saying that there is, the truth is relative. Hmm? We will be talking, right now I'm even wondering, I'm seeing it in the West, but it's slowly coming about the pronouns. Now you, some people are being called them, and it's a person, it's a one singular person. It's getting worse, and it's getting into the church. We are, should I tell you about Shakahola? We all know. And it's not just Shakahola. It's getting closer. The other day, today, I think it was a week or a month ago. Yeah, it's, a week is a month ago right now, yes. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to a friend of mine. She has been going to this church uh, where there's a bishop, I will not mention names, and she went and joined the praise and worship, slowly, kido kidogo. Then the bishop started saying, oh, this is nice, you can come visit. And the things, and, and this is one thing, they are prying on for people who are in the faith. They are already now becoming bishops. We are showing them honor. Quote in, quote out, if that is a definition of honor. Right now, oh, it's getting worse, guys. People who, one, one day I was thinking if when, when, the, when the, for example, the, the, the leadership gives me a topic and I come here, I preach to you about a v verses that are not there. I lie to you and even think some of you will not know. It is said of a story where a preacher was talking about the book of Jude chapter 2. And every Sunday he was preaching on Jude 2. <laughs> For those who are laughing, know that Jude has one chapter. 
Those who are not, I do not know if they know. <laughs> but he preached. First Sunday he preached and he told the people, when you go back, go and read. And the next, day, the next Sunday he came, he asked, how many have read? And everyone was raising their hand, but there were a few who were not raising their hand, so he preached it again. And after four Sundays, the church elders came and said, we have read. See, it went to another. Jude 2, they read. The elders. I think we need a preacher to come and lie to you, or I quote some wrong scriptures here and there. And see if you will know. It's getting darker. And right now, many will be deceived. You see, when the, the sad part when I read this is that many will be deceived. Many will follow the wrong thing. When he talks in, in the book of, is it First Peter? He says that many will follow the false teachings. Because this is what their each ears want to hear. Brothers and sisters, it is going to get darker and darker. And if you yourself don't take the salvation you have seriously, you will be a victim of the many that will lose their faith. That saddens me. Many will lose their faith. Many will go astray. When I look at... Oh. I look at the... When he says that there will be earthquakes, there will be, <laughs> there will be famine. And I just decided to Google. Especially when it comes to famine, I went on, did a, bit, a small research, and he says that every single day, 25,000 people die because of famine or food or hunger-related issues. You see, th that shocked me. Because I thought... I thought, wow, 25,000 every single day die. The earthquakes we have, we have had actually for the past 25 years, when you look at the earthquakes that have been there and the magnitude, even there was one last year which claimed more than 20,000 people. Oh, we are, if when Paul was writing and he says that we are in the last days, we are in the last, last days. It's getting closer. When the people in 2000 were selling everything, saying that to keep, when we turn 2000, we might laugh at them, but also now it is getting closer. We are in 2024. It's getting closer to the day, to that day. It is the last of the last days. If that was the last hour, we are in the last minutes of seconds. He might come. We might not even die. We might join him. He might come and find us here. You see, some of you will be persecuted. You see, the persecutions we have in Kenya, it's, it's also interesting. We have a few, very few... Last year, I got the chance to go to a conference called Revive Conference. And when we went to that conference, there was something unique when we were talking about reaching the unreached with the gospel. And I realized that 13 people, every single day, you can even do your research now, 13 people die because of persecution. 13 Christians are killed on a single daily basis, being persecuted for the faith that we believe. Right now in Kenya, the persecution we have is a bit, does not cost life. I was doing my driving, uh, taking my driving test the other day, and the persecution that we are undergoing is 2,000. And, and tell me, let me tell you something. That persecution is also very real. Out of almost 200, and we were almost 300, but to Lianguka. I mean, it's like to Lianguka. But to Liangusho, to Lianguka, <laughs> according to them, we failed uh, around 290, 290 people. And I remember when I was coming out of that place, uh, and I was just asked, uh, have you passed on, 
So can be any rice to ni either two thousand sai amuru di shule uh in a twenty five hundred. And it's that easy. And and, and they're not see at you wanna feature the at kuja. No. It's 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 outrightly. Two thousand. Luckily I was with my other three friends and, and we call ourselves right now I'm being called Joel, Shadrach Joel. You you are sh- those who know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> the three of us came out and refused to pay. We were joined with another fourth one, but yeah, I was a little bit of a So, but luckily he joined us. So he refused also to pay. And w- we stayed there till the last one. We were told just wait. Then, if you're not paying, just wait. If, if your papers are called, because you are to do the theory, and then we are going to do the other practical. We ended up not doing anything. That I, I felt so sad. Uh, but in my head, I knew 2,500 in When I get at home, I open the portal. I find that I passed. And then I'm wondering, did Peter Aji? Because I was the one who was there doing the exam and I was told I failed. Part, part of me still, we are, me with my other friends, we are, we are grumbling and we, we all passed, by the way. Uh, but we have been asking ourselves, what should we do? Because if we failed, we should have failed. Are we going to write to the anti-corruption and tell them? But, but we're going to talk, uh, I'm now digressing. But the thing is that the persecution right now we are undergoing the persecution in terms of our integrity, in terms of our values. You're not being killed for your faith. I pray that despite that persecution that comes, that you will be found to stand. Now corruption is, is everywhere. I have a friend of mine I met, now this one is true, two months ago. I met her, and she told me she was a student at KU. And when she was a student, they had this lottery system in 1998. A lottery system of people going for, uh, people to go to the commission that year. It was commission 1998. Was it 98 or 99? One of them, commission. Like the one we're having this year, and I hope you don't miss. And, she luckily, out of all of them, the entire CU, she was a member, she was not even a leader. Two of them got the chance to go and attend commission. She attended commission conference. After that, she joined, uh, she, she, she got the heart of missionary work. She went to Europe, London, for two years. She went to South Sudan for seven years. She finished there, she went to Somalia for another five years. She was kidnapped for two years in Somalia. And she was telling me and narrating a story. And if you heard that story, being persecuted because of your faith, because of your work, I pray that some of you today, which I'll be talking in the next, that the persecutions that we are undergoing here are real. When, when, when someone comes and tells you that you will, re, you will receive a hundred, you see when you read, let us read, we can read right now. Mark chapter number 10, verse 28 and 29. Mark 10, 28 29. 28 says, Then Peter spoke, We have left everything to you to follow you. Truly I tell you, this, 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 this is when Peter was saying that they have left anything, everything. What is it in for them? And Jesus says that I tell you the truth. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or fields for me and the gospel will not, will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. I want you to read with me. The first thing they will receive a hundredfold is homes. A hundredfold? A hundredfold? A hundredfold? A hundredfold? A hundredfold? A hundredfold? Nanguvu, nanguvu, hiyo, kwanza hiyo. 
Because, because when we receive, we receive a hundredfold all the others. But when Jesus was telling them, he told them, along with them, there will be persecutions. If you stand for what is right, you will be persecuted. If you do not stand for what is right, you will not. Persecutions is guaranteed. Many will be persecuted and many will turn away from their faith. I hope some of you get, do you know right now, when you read the book From Africa to the Rest, in 2018 says that Africa has the biggest number of Christians in the world. Something that was in, the, in, the, in, in Europe for many years now is in Africa. The next Christianity will be shaped by you and me. Who will go for missions back? A lot of churches are closing in Germany. Who will go? Who will go? Who will stand for what is true? And because of these trials, there will come many more. They will test you. They will pass through the, you, you through the fire. Some sicknesses that come, they test us. Some of us have even lost our loved ones. Hold on. Many things will come our way. Many persecutions will come our way. The reality is that we are getting, the times are getting darker and darker and darker. Even in the church, he has already come in. The love of many are growing cold. Others are going to material possessions. Others have even said now, ah, if this is a Christianity, then watch it, we guy. It's getting dark, and it's getting darker and darker. Choose today. Then he says that the gospel will be preached, and I hope you'll be among the people who will preach that gospel. It was prophesied a long time ago that Jesus was born, and we all know that the prophecies came to pass. It has been prophesied that he will come, he's coming back again. Oh, and trust you me, he is coming. But how will he find you when he comes? Because when he comes, there will be two things. There will be judgment, And there will be, for those who have persevered and have accepted him as a Lord and Savior, there will be a reward for them. If there is judgment coming and you are not saved, you should be terrified. Oh, you should, I cannot even describe the terror you should have. It should, it, you should be terrified. You will die. There will be eternal fire. Woe to the sinner. If you do not change your ways, some of you, you see, this is a Christianity that has been watered down. Christianity, that there is no difference between, for example, those who are relating, between your relationship and the people of the world when they're relating. Everything is the same. Between how you do your even class assignments, same. How you talk. How you greet Mama Mboga Pala and Chako Barbara. How you behave with one another. Same. If there's no difference, the, the music you listen to, the dressing you dress. You see, I hope we are truly transformed. And I pray that as the scripture teaches us, as we are being encouraged, as we are being rebuked, that it actually transforms us. It's not by works, I know. But he says your faith without action is dead. Where is your actions? Right now, we are hearing the consultation span is eight seconds. They are more or less looking at you. Where when you come a real? Some of you even right now, you already scrolled me away. But if they see your life, you see, when he talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I was reading it again, it never says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that there was a fourth man. We do not know if they knew or they didn't know. But the person who knew was a king who was outside, and he saw there are four. 
even if can people look at your life and say that for sure this is not just him there is someone helping this guy that he is with the Lord you see when they saw Jesus doing the great miracles when they saw him they say they glorified God the Father when you read about the, the one of my two major characters in the Bible I love is Daniel and Joseph when you read about these two people they always give glory to God even when they were asked Joseph was asked can you give an interpretation he said no but he can and I'll tell you what he says you can read that in your book Genesis 41 verse 39 Daniel when he was asked can you give a, a, an interpretation of this dream Actually, give me the dream and the interpretation. He says, no one can, no wise man, no enchanter, no, not even, no man can give you that. It's only the Lord. Be warned. He's coming. And how will he find you? That's the question. How will he find you? We have a mandate as Christians. We have a mandate that we are not running a race without knowing what we are hoping for. We have a mandate. You see, for example, if there was a fire here, we would be running out. But there will be people who are running in, the firefighters. Because they have a sense of responsibility that this is what they were called to do. Same for all of us here. When the world is dying, when it's getting darker, then we are the lamps that have been set upon the hill. We should be rushing in, telling them, run. Run for your life. Run away from, evil, from, from, from the things you're listening to. Run. From pornography, from all those pleasures of this world, they will not satisfy. Run away from the love of money. The love of money. run. That's a sense of responsibility. That's a sense of duty that you should have that come to Christ. That there is no hope in this world. Only a fool will waste this time because we are going to eternity. Choose him. Allow him. Listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that is speaking to you. That we will be those who will be saying those words with a sense of of responsibility. You see, that's the great commission that we are called to do. We all know in the book of Matthew, or no, not we all know, I hope you know, in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, it says, all authority has been given unto me. I almost tell you to tell your neighbor, but I think you will have no words. But he said, go ye into all the nations. Preach the gospel. Make disciples, actually, says. Go ye into all the earth, teaching them. I hope, Mumeke or Makena? Verse 20. Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of ages. That's the great commission we have been called to do, to go and preach. As it gets darker, there is a hope, there is a light at the end. I was also doing my study in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, to the seven churches. And let me read for you the rewards of those seven churches, that if they were to stand, if they were to conquer. In Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, he says, I will grant you to eat from the fruit of life which is in the paradise of God. To those who conquer, I will grant this. To the church in Smyrna, that you will not be hurt by the second death. To the church at Pagamum, that you will be given hidden manna, a white stone with a name written on it, that only the one who knows it is the one who receives it. To the church in Theatira, 
that if you persevere to the very end, you will be given authority over the nations. To the church of Sardis, you will be clothed in a white garment. I will never blot out his name from the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. To the church in Philadelphia, I will make him a pillar in the temple of the Lord. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of God. To the church of the Lord Asia, he says that I will grant him to sit with me on the throne, on my throne. How will he find you? Will he find you holding fast to the faith? Will he find you contending and striving to live a righteous life? Will he find you loving your neighbor? Will he find you caring for your neighbor who is a believer enough by rebuking them in love and telling them that the path you're following is dangerous? Will he find you doing his work Will he find you saying no to the pleasures of this world because you know whom you hope for? Will you be found faithful with what has been entrusted to you? Not seeking after the things of this world because tell, trust me, right now many people are saying it's, oh, invest, nini. We're even forgetting to invest in the word of the... This, this is where your investment, the greatest investment you invest in. As you invest your money in that building which can go down, as you invest your money in those circles which are man-made, as you invest, whatever you want to invest, invest for your soul. How do you invest here? Reading it. Study. By the way, if, if I had a gift of reading the Bible and of praying, signing your work, all of you, so that you can receive that gift, but there is no gift. Paul says, train yourself. It is hard work. Oh, even when you don't want to read, wake up. Read that passage ten times because you are so sleepy. Read it. <coughs> Discipline. Three times a day when we read the book of Daniel, how much he prayed three times. Consistently. That, that is the only place they could find fault in this guy. If we look at your life, can we say that the only place we can find fault is in your spirituality? Or do we have a lot of things that we can find fault in? Is it how you, you behave? You see, some of, our, of, of us as Christians, we are so nice to other Christians on Sunday. We meet you on Monday, you're something else. They are called some submarine Christians. That on, 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 on Saturday they surface. On Sunday they are they're there. On Monday they go down. Hmm? I pray that even in you see, even if I come here, I, I insult you. Some people are insulted, insulted, and you you respond and say, Atawewe. You see? You might not have said all those words because you are a Christian, but you, the Atawewe <laughs> encompasses everything. That is just in talking. Some of your relationships are questionable. You're found in some weird, and this is to everyone. You see, it's not just to the members, even the leaders. I have served with, with the student union leaders especially even the executive committee, to know that they also struggle. But the one thing is that we, we, have, we are hiding. We are hiding. You see, when we struggle, you say it outrightly. When I came here, I told you I have been struggling with my... If, if I'm struggling with my sexual... I have, some, I have three good friends of mine that I will share my life and I tell them, here I am struggling. Oh, when you confess your sins to one another, we're supposed to be our brother's keeper. You see, today when I stand here, when we're talking about his coming, is that will, you, will he find you ready? Will he find you ready? Will he find you standing? Will he find you? Will he find you walking in his ways?
in, when Moses, when you even read the book of Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, he says that before you today, I have laid life and death. I have put before you a blessing and a curse. When you read the chapter 29, it has a lot of blessings, it has a lot of curses, but when you, he says that choose life. Choose life. Unapewa di mwakenya unambuwa, here I have laid life and death. Choose life. Today, how will he find you as a Christian? Choose life. Choose the way to follow. Choose, choose him. And when he meets you, there will be either two things. The first one he will ask is, will he say, good and faithful servant? Well done, good and faithful servant. Or will he meet you? And like Matthew chapter 7 says, that I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of evil. Which words will you hear? I pray that even if he doesn't come in my lifetime and in your lifetime, that when you join him, how will you go out? Sometimes when I listen to the preachers who have gone before us and how they died, eh? how some of them even desired to die preaching. They, one of them, I say that he would preach, he would like to die after he has finished a sermon and put his microphone down that he will be happy. To have done the will of the Lord, to know that your life counted. Right now I'm, I'm realizing I'm getting older. And I'm not old. I, uh, I should let use it. But I'm realizing I'm getting closer. I have been thinking of, of the perfect gift to be gifting my friends is a stopwatch that is a countdown. For example, let me just ask you, buy for yourself this one. Ask yourself how many years you would want to live. If it's 100 and you are right now almost 20 22, 23, minus that, have a countdown. And every time you wake up, unona tuka kiteremka. <laughs> oh, we are going. Soon we are going, we are following. But how will you go? Will you have lived for the Lord? Will you be contented if the Lord tells you to just live and live a quiet life. You see, sometimes when people die, we start now hearing the scandals. Oh, he was this. He was found, he had five wives. He had eh, eh, the side hustle. Squeeze it side hustle. How many side chick? <laughs> Can't you die? And then we realize, wow. He used to do that. He was going to a children's home every, oh, he used to do, can we hear? Stories of how he was walking with those who were struggling. He was walking, he was there. Can your life count? That when you die, we realize that you did more good things. Or right now, everything you do is, is just on social media. You see, even, even the secret place that we were told in the book of Matthew, when you read Matthew 6, he says that when you do, for example, it's prayers or fasting. He says, go to the inner room and do what? But these days we go to the inner room, lock and carry our phone so that we can snap and then post Same time with the Lord, man. <laughs> I am not against you sharing verses that have impacted you. But we even no longer have a secret time with the Lord. I pray, this is my desire for you. That you would be people, students of this scripture. That you would read it. That it will be alive. That the things it says, you would desire to do them. That people can look at your life and say, wow. Wow, that's our life worth emulating. And not just on the outside. In the inside too. I hear one preacher called Paul Washer. I like, he said a statement that 
that still rings and stays with me. He says that when he reads the scripture and he's told, for example, to come here and talk about humility, that he can quote for you scriptures. Hmm? From the book of Psalms, wisdom, if you give him whatever topic, he can come and preach. But he says he fears that if you tell him that, can I come to live with you for a week and learn humility from your life? That at the moment right now, he can guard himself. I can be here to preach to you guys and tell you, whoa, you should do this. But can you find me in my private time doing the things I'm telling you? Studying, praying, reading, walking in humility, caring for the neighbor that doesn't even care about you, doing good for those who hate you, loving your enemies, praying for those who persecute you, saying, may the Lord bless you. Pray for them that they will find him and they will know him, that they will not be eternally doomed. Will you be found? My time is almost coming to an end. And I also want to pray with you. So allow me to, to go to a moment of prayer. And I want you to, with every head bowed, I want to pray with the first group of people. In my sharing, I pray that if you do not know the Lord, then you should be terrified. And in my sharing, I say that you, should, you, you really should be terrified. You should read in the Old Testament of the things that happened to the people who continued in wickedness. You should see even the people of God, Israelites themselves. If you do not know him, if you do not know him, then all we are talking about right now, all we are talking about right now, will find you in a wrong place. He will find you because let me tell you something, it's not the amount of prayer, the coming to this, it's not how much you do for the Lord. It's just accept, accepting him as Lord and Savior. That is the only thing. So if you want to give your life to Christ and you have never, lift up your hands and I will pray with you just where you are. Shoot your hand up and I will pray with you. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for the other one. And let me pray with you. Father Lord, I pray for the people you have convicted in their hearts. The Lord Jesus Christ, that this is the path they ought to follow. This is where their life, and I, that this is what they ought to give their life to, to you. Because you're the, you're the one who is able to sustain them. You're the one who is able to give meaning to their life. And I pray the Lord Jesus Christ as today in their hearts that may you start with them this journey. May you walk with them. May you bring people their way that they will be discipled, that they will walk in your ways, that they themselves will feel the conviction to attend even these discipleship classes, the nurturing classes. That Lord Jesus Christ, they will grow to love you, to cherish you. And this will mark a turnaround in their lives. Oh God, right now, Angels are celebrating. Of that one soul that is saved, that too, and the how, no matter how many of them, Lord, that Jesus Christ, thank you for their lives. I pray that you will hold them as you always do because this is your promise that everyone the Lord has brought to you that you will, will lose none, that you will sustain us and you will sustain them in this journey. Secondly, I want to pray for people. Christians who their lives, they have not been living with the remembrance that he is coming, that the Lord is coming back, who have chosen to follow the pleasures of this world, who are entangled in many things. I want to pray for you that the Lord will sustain you. Lift up your hand and we can pray together. Thank you for those hands. Father Lord, 
I pray with the believers in this place that Jesus Christ, you will sustain them in this journey. That right now it may seem that it's a dark moment. It's getting darker and darker. I pray for them that in their struggles, you will send help. In the dark moments, you will send help. I pray, Lord, that they too will heed and will not harden their heart. They will hear this call and they will say, yes, Lord, help me. Walk with me. They will give it their all. They will strive. They will work out their salvation with fear and trembling. That, Lord Jesus, they will not be complacent. That there will be a difference in their lives. I pray for each and every one of us right now in this place. The Lord, our lives shall be read. Shall be like letters to be read by the people of this world. That they shall see us and they shall see you. They shall feel conviction of how we live. Of how we talk. Of how we behave. Of whatever we do. The Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you will walk with us. You will walk with us. I pray the Lord in this journey, in this Christian journey, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how dark it gets, may we always remember in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, he says that never will I leave you nor forsake you. We will remember even at the end of the great commission that you said you will be with us to the very end of ages. That you are able to be with us and sympathize with us even in our struggles because Lord you are tempted in every way you know and thank you Lord because you always you always sustain us and you who have started this good work in our lives will bring it to accomplishment and I pray that Lord Jesus Christ we will stand for you we will stand for you and we will walk in your ways thank you for this topic Maranatha come Lord come only found in the book of 1 Corinthians. And I pray the Lord Jesus Christ that as you come, that may we be found to be ready. May we hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. We thank you and we glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.